Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is an episode from Read Japanese series where I go learn about Japanese culture, my own culture, but from mainly non-Japanese people. The reason I started this series is since I moved to America, I've encountered so many Japanese enthusiasts who know so much more about my culture than I do. So admitting my ignorance, I decided to ask them to teach me about Japanese culture. In this episode, I'm going to learn about the art of target test cutting, tameshigiri. So it's actually a sword content too. Let me go change and let's get started. All right, so I changed and here I am with Kendall Wells, who is my friend and also a cutting master. Master is a very <laughs> master is a very strong word, but I do practice. <laughs> right. So thank you for joining, and if you don't mind, would you introduce yourself to audience? I'm an actor. I'm a stunt performer. Um, I've been doing acting, stunt performance, and martial arts since I was a child. Uh, I started studying Shinkendo, which is this Japanese martial art, uh, in 2007 with my sensei Matthew Lynch, uh, and uh, now I teach as well. Nice. Nice. What was the reason you started learning Japanese sword? I had been studying martial arts of various kinds and different kinds of swordsmanship. Uh, Japanese sword always stood out to me, I think because of the mindset that you have to have and that is emphasized with Japanese swordsmanship, zanshin. As a non-Japanese person, is there any challenge learning about Japanese, um, you know, this art of tamashigiri? I don't think that there's a challenge per se. I mean, as a child, honestly, I had a great interest in Japanese martial art and specifically Japanese sword. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was very hard to find uh, a good instructor for Japanese sword in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't really until 2007 that I, I found somebody that taught an art that was what I wanted. As a Westerner learning a Japanese martial art, it's very insightful into the culture. Mm -hmm. I think any martial art is a good is a good way to to get insight into any culture, and yeah. Japanese culture in particular is difficult to get good insight into unless you are invited in. Right. Right. Okay. So I believe cutting technique is a unique technique, and even though I practice uh, sword action stuff, that doesn't mean I can cut. And the only time that I have done is uh, for commercial shoot and. To be honest, I didn't know what I was doing too much. <laughs> Today, I would like to learn from uh, Kendo as much as possible. Let's do it. You're right. gonna do great. You better do great. <laughs> Let's do it. You got your whole culture riding on you right now. You know that, right? <laughs> heavy. <laughs> heavy. <laughs> what exactly is tamashigiri? Tamashigiri is test cutting. We can test two things. We can test the swordsman, or we can test the sword itself. Now, originally, it was about testing the sword. The sword was made, is this going to cut? You need to know before you go out and use this and your life depends on it, is this going to cut? A while ago it was used on grass, essentially, that was scooped up, tied together in a bundle. It was also sometimes used on human bodies. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yes, I was gonna ask you. yes, that's definitely testing the sword. If this cuts through human bodies, how many bodies does this cut through? So it's proven in history people were uh, using human body for tamashigiri. Yes, that, that was actually signed onto the, the tang or the nakago of, of swords, mm -hmm. uh, which is underneath the grip. So you can go and see, it's the signature as well as this cut through this many bodies on this date. It wasn't until um, Kaiso Obata, who started Chinkendo, decided to use something different and use tatami omote. He said, if we roll this up and we soak this, this makes a good target. And then we can cut it many times, it'll stay in place. Right. And if you soak them, you'll get the right texture. Whether it's like a human body or not, the idea is that it does replicate that. A limb, for instance, right. that tatami is like a limb, that bamboo is like bone. Right. That's the concept behind it. How difficult it is to find Japanese sword to purchase in the States? Uh, actually, just a Japanese sword is not really that difficult. You can go onto eBay and find quite a bit. To find a good Japanese sword is a little trickier. Mine, my blade was made in about 1750-ish, so Edo period. We don't cut with anything that actually has paperwork to go with it. That's a historical piece. Right. We don't want right. to destroy something that is of Damn. history. Hey! Oh! 
So this is Kendall's sensei, Matthew san. My sensei Matthew has been and is one of the top instructors at Hombu Dojo uh, and has been for some time. Some time. Yeah. yeah. Held together with traditional samurai era office depot rubber bands. Nice. Just to go over fundamental stuff, we're going to have you right hand up towards the tsuba, left hand all the way down at the very end of the ska. Mm -hmm. Bring your hands push them slightly in together as if you're kind of wringing out a towel. Mm -hmm. Is we're going to go ahead and stand feet together, mm -hmm. raise up to joran kamae. You're going to take your right foot, step back, and you're going to do hidari kesa all the way down to gera. Joran, step back, kesa. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking for is your edge angle and your sword angle and your tome, just to make sure that it does tome at mm -hmm. the end. Right. Because we don't want to have you cut all the way through and go bink into the ground. Right. So not really like action stuff, like oh. No. Way. If you're doing movies and you're all like, oh, right. I'm doing all this. Right. If you want to cut something and I'm just focusing on your technique, that's all I want. Uh -huh. Very simple. Right. So today is pretty much unlearning what I have learned. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you've done a lot of action, right. Simplify now. Right. Angle wise, it should be lined up with your kimono. Mm -hmm. It's the same angle as that. It's about 70 degrees. Okay. I'm hitting with monuchi. Monuchi is just this, about a hand span mm -hmm. here towards the end, not including the kisaki. This is where you want to be striking with. Okay. I know you have cut before, so I'll yeah. expect something from you. <laughs> <laughs> just cutting this tatami mat is not that hard, but getting the right angle, right speed, cutting beautifully, I believe that takes a lot of practice, right? That does take a lot of yeah. practice. Let's give you a shinken instead of the eye toll. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this edge towards me. Okay. I'm going to hold this out okay. so you can see this is, again, safe towards you because there's no edge towards you. I'm going to open the top hand. So you're going to take your right hand, come right up under me, and give me a little tug so that I know you have it. Exactly. Now I know you have it. Okay. From there, I'm going to open this up so you can take the bottom. And this is angled slightly to my right. I can catch this just in case it slips. I'm going to walk away and you're not going to move. I'm going to step away. Now I know you have it, so you're good. That is the most polite and safe way that we can transfer a sword. Pretty heavy. It is pretty heavy. This is just for students. It's very beefy. It is and a very do you solid think sword. For Tameshigiri sword, is it better to use like thick sword? For cutting tatami, if you want to just cut through targets, You'd want to use something that's very thin, very flat, because that's going to go through the grass more easily. Right. For us, for our school, we want to use swords that are good for combat. So it's not necessarily easier to cut with, right. because it is a little wider, because it's meant to cut armor and cut bodies, and be able to take combat, you know, contact with those swords. This is a little thicker, it's going to be a little harder. This is, again, not a totally traditional blade, okay. but it's very durable. Right. At your own pace. Dogs are rooting for me. Dogs are rooting for you. So from here, bring it to Jodan. And then, oh, sorry, let me make sure. So, hold. So you see this angle now? It's about 70 degrees. It lines almost perfectly with your kimono, with your gi. That should be a good cut. It's pretty good. A little bit of a scoop, but that's okay. See, any time that you, you finish a cut, you can come in, check and see what it looks like, if it scoops in, if it's too steep, if it's too flat. This tells you many things. How it came off will tell uh -huh. you something. How it's cut will absolutely tell you something. Yeah. Um, and that's, again, why we do this. It's, it's learning purposes. It's not right. just so we can feel cool cutting things. Yeah. It's entirely so we can get better as swordsmen. Right. Hold on, come I and... So. You could use even less power. Right. Because now we start getting towards the tome where it's getting a little out. Uh, if you see. see that your tip is starting to drift out, it means mm -hmm. you cut all the way down so much so that it's opening up. Too much right. power. Okay. But the okay. angle is very good. If same, both are good, because oh. you match the same angle. I said we want the same angle because that was perfect and you matched it exactly. Ah, uh, right. I see, I see. Migi kesa. Migi kesa? Migi kesa is a little different. When you cut this way, your hands are crossed mm -hmm. and your wrists are crossed, so it locks them in place. When you cut this side, they're open. More can go wrong now. Oh. 
I loved the sound. Exactly. So yeah. the sound is a big part of it. If it sounds like a zipper, you did it correctly. So this one right here, right here. It's a little steeper. This one was a little steeper, but it's still not bad. This actually worked pretty well. Your angle was perfect. The sound was great. Um, and this was really right where I wanted it. I'm impressed. By the way, this sword cuts really well. It doesn't require a lot of power. And that's the thing. If you have a, a sharp sword mm -hmm. that is decently made, and your angle is good, your technique is good, then the cut should be effortless. Okay. This is a great angle. This is, again, is a perfect angle. So you're very consistent on your kesa. Okay. Okay. You're going to shift from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some footwork to this. You're going to shuffle and push up. Notice how my arms end long. Big kiriage to get all the way through. Okay. If you shorten this or you drag the tip behind and you don't push this forward, it won't work. Think forward and up. If you come in too much from the side, you're going to smack it sideways. It's going to fly off. So find this straight line. I don't know why, but I feel more confident than doing kiss up. Oh, do you oh, now? No. Okay, well then I'll just <laughs> let you go ahead and do this. See, I told you I was confident. You were very confident. <laughs> and it almost worked. So wow. what happened here? Okay. We can see you got halfway through. The angle was not bad. Mm -hmm. I think a little more speed. Push forward a little bit more. Part of why you didn't get through is that you dragged the sword back. Push this forward. Right. Uh, my confidence is gone. <laughs> Is your confidence back? Yes. His confidence is back. Yes. Okay, so not bad. It's a little flat though. Right, right. <clears throat> not bad. Still angle it's a is li little... Angle's just a little flat. Try one more time. <laughs> right. That was actually steeper. Less control though. I'm going to shuffle back, Kesa. Mm -hmm. Small transition to Akikamae. Mm -hmm. Shuffle forward, Kiriage. Kiriage was right there, Kesa was right here. Your angles are pretty good. We can try Yoko with a little bit left. Don't cock back too far. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're on this side for right now, again, is because my hands are crossed. So this locks in the angle more easily. If mm -hmm. this is here, people will push, pull, or drag, or drop this. Mm, it's see. easier to maintain a horizontal Yoko line from this side. From this side. And again, Tome at the end. But the important part right now is shift your body through. The home run. Home run! The home run. Um, the reason that didn't go through, I think not enough power. Mm. And also you'll see that your cut is not quite perfectly straight. horizontal, not perfectly straight. Oh, I see. So the reason why it flew totally sideways was because you hit it correctly. That's good. If it had flown forward, you would to have hit camera. it to the camera, for instance, <laughs> that would have been incorrect. But because yeah. this is a horizontal cut, you're supposed to cut from completely the side and it mm. went on that trajectory, it went on that line. We can try two cuts, right? Yeah, we can try two cuts. Oh, Inazuma. <laughs> I, I don't think I can succeed, but... You want to try Inazuma. Yeah. So, I got to learn some basic stuff and this is the last piece of tatami. And I'm gonna try something crazy. <laughs> Inazuma cut? Inazuma. Uh, lightning cut. You don't really get to try on the first lesson, I guess. <laughs> no, you don't get to try on the first lesson. For this, you yeah. can try this. Yeah. It's not an easy cut. Right. The idea is we cut towards the bottom, we cut up, we cut kiriage, and from there you quickly switch before the top of the target falls, you switch and do a yoko cut. Right. And if you remember how the yoko cut went for you last time, when it was standing there and it was solid, you hit it and it right. flew that direction. Right. Now imagine hitting that while it's not standing on anything. Okay. And also before it falls over. The sword you're using is also pretty big, pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to give this a shot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> special. This is special occasion. Okay. You can try this. Okay. This is a difficult cut for any practitioner, even people who are very good, you won't get it every time. Ah. 
Fa. Nej, du kan ikke det. Fa. Fa. Okay, so we finished. I feel like I learned so much. Even when we are not shooting, I feel like you taught me a lot of interesting knowledge. So thank you so much. Of course, of course. It's so a great time. If you want to learn about good cutting, shinkendo.com, that's the place to go for everything. Mashu Dojo is my sensei's dojo. That's okay. where I learned. Right. And kendallwells.com has all of my information on it if you want to get in touch with me personally. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Matane!